I'm Kerry Winch. And I'm Craig Edibold. Leather sofa, mahogany paneling, some of those that are, <laughs> are <laughs> options now. You mind if I get in this? Go, go, for, it. go for it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Very nice. <laughs> wood air vents. Yep. Yep. Cup holder. You know why we use wood wood vents? Because they get hot, would get hot if they were metal. Uh, well, a lot of people use plastic, you know. Well, really well, nice. It gets soft if it's plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty impressive. I'm gonna open these. Uh, it's okay if I open these, right? Yeah. yeah. Those cabinets are one off. No, no other husband will ever have those. So. Yeah, that curved front was a real pain to do. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, it's really an art uh, deco, and, you know, in mm -hmm. stereo console system, air conditioner hidden by a painting. Very nice. I noticed this little thing up here. Uh, what is this? That is the power antenna option for the stereo. Flip the switch and it'll come up. All right. And go quite a ways. It's up past the arm here. Nice. I'm here at Camp Inn and they have a campground on their premises. We are four, 400 feet back in the woods here at Camp Inn and it looks like a state park when you enter in and we have our own campground on site with a bathroom and a shower and the whole thing and it's free camping for anybody but a teardrop camper. Well I qualify. I'm yes, staying here tonight. <laughs> just, just call ahead and we'll make sure you can get a key to access the bathroom. Have a full bathroom for use for their uh, customers and visitors. How long have you been at this? So in September was our 21st anniversary for Camp Inn manufacturing this. Is anyone else who was in business when you started still in business? I think they're still in business. That would probably be about the only one. That, nobody here knew what one was. <laughs> we discovered one accidentally on a cover of a magazine and went, well, we need to build one of these. That's how Camp Inn started. After a while, we left our full-time engineering jobs and started doing this. What kind of engineer? We're mechanic. Great, you too? Yes. You have the right qualifications, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So three interior lights, uh, one on the left, one on the right, and you have one in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, you really do get a nice feel in these uh, wood cabin, uh, you know, uh, interiors. I mean, they just, you know, you lay down and you look up and you're like, ah, oh, I've got a wood ceiling over me. Standard, this thing up on top? No, that is not the banister. Yeah. That is a, um, a grab bar for accessibility. We initially okay. put them in for handicapped people. Mm -hmm but then realized that they were so useful just being able to move around the cabin easily. Very nice, yeah. That, uh, they're that, actually a fairly common option. It kind of gives it an elegant yeah. aesthetic, too. Yeah. I mean, it's... Well, it's, and our customers aren't getting any younger, so it's nice to have something yeah, to move around right. with. But we are very involved with handicap accessibility. One thing you probably notice is the cabin door is wide, much wider than any other teardrop you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's a full three-foot wide door, so a person in a wheelchair can just simply transfer over into it with the help of the grab bar mm -hmm. uh, these are really truly uh, functional cap use you know accessible usable no i'm uh, uh, more and more campsites i go to uh, especially yeah. state campgrounds are uh, you know wheelchair accessible yeah. uh, i mean out you know the adirondacks in the middle of nowhere but how many wheelchair accessible rvs do you see <laughs> not many yeah. it's two guys yeah. in the garage built one ourselves and then said hey we could do this as a business there was a lot of companies that came and went over the years uh, because they would they'd be like okay we can do that you know starting a business and running it is a lot more work than most people think uh, 1040 trailers later you're producing some you know top-notch quality you know yeah. there's nothing like yeah. it you know these are heirloom trailers I think the camping is still in its own realm what it we found thing? is because it is such a small space if you don't properly divert the air, you get the, the air conditioner starts to short cycle uh -huh. where it will only run for a minute, then it shuts off for a minute, and then it turns back on for yeah. a minute. And it um, by having the diffuser on there, it allows it to run for several minutes before shutting the compressor off. Um, you can also get it as a solid wood face. When you click this, it folds down as a desk. Put yeah. your computer, yeah. you can put your iPad, you can use it to, to eat a, a meal. Uh -huh. um, if you want to angle this down so that, you say you put a laptop in here, 
and you're laying in bed watching a movie, oops, you can actually lower this down a few degrees. Nice, nice, so it, yeah. It doesn't block your view. And you have holes in the side, I guess, for routing cables and yes, things? Yes, yeah. or cable yeah. passes. Is that on both sides? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All the cabinets actually have a cord pass. Uh, they're and, all through them, yeah. top and bottom. And then you see little over little in the corner here, there's actually a plug. Mm -hmm. So you so got you got, up. Yeah, yeah, you've got the, the yeah, little... You can have AC come up here. Right, yeah. the little desktop yeah. little plug that you can pass the cord through. Like to render electronics. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you you could plug something in there and run a cord all the way up to this upper cabinet if you wanted. So the couch has a couple different modes. This is set up as the couch mode. Um, your knees are raised up a little bit for comfort. Um, the other, the next mode would be to drop it down flush. This gives you extends the bed surface. You can put your pillow up here, and now you have an eight foot long bed. So if you're uh, you know, Wilt Chamberlain or... Uh, yeah, if you're on a tall date, you know. You can, you yeah. can fit in there. Yeah. Um, the next mode is oops, by removing the cushions and folding... Oh, let me move this piece out of the way for right now. By folding this down, we can put the cushions back in and now we have a little bench area here. Mm -hmm. A little raised bench that you can sit on. Mm -hmm. That gives you nice access to these uh, storage areas in front of the, the couch. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say you have kids with you, or a dog, or what? you just want more room to store gear. You can remove the couch cushions, and you grab this frame, set it up at the windowsill height. There's some little locking latches that latch it into place. Down on the bottom here, we have a little flip-up headboard that keeps the, your pillows from sliding off the end of your bed. Uh -huh. And then the couch cushions become mattresses for the kids, or it, this gives an area for the dog to sleep. Uh -huh. uh, the couch cushions become, or pillows, become pillows for the kids. Very nice. And when it's time to go to bed, even a little drop in the <laughs> yeah. it keeps the kids from falling out. Great. How so how wide is this? Minutes, I've set up the whole yeah. sleeping arrangement. How wide is the uh, is the uh, 56 inches. 56 inches. Okay, so it's just under 5 feet. Yeah. And if these bars weren't there, I could climb up there, but this this will hold my weight. I leave my bunk bed set up. Your camping gear all stuffed up in there, so anytime they're with me, I'm all ready to hit the road. Well, it's just so great to see like the ideas that, that come out of these things, you know, it's just great stuff. Great. I find large RVs kind of boring. <laughs> I find that okay, I'm, I'm definitely... Back uh, to couch mode. Customer okay. that was six seven that would sit on there with a ball cap on and could slide, put his hand between the ceilings. Yeah. Yeah, a pretty tall person could fit in there, no problem. Yeah, side views. So these yeah. Are, the little hand grabs are nice. Yeah, you can help slide it, you know, back and forth. Very good. Yeah, I like to want to go to the sofa myself personally. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Out, yeah. yeah, good. This is a nice reading light here. Sure. Yep. Yep. Great. Have, on the 560 are four large storage compartments with lids. Mm -hmm. These are plastic or uh, a, uh, yep, it's a molded, resin? Molded plastic. So if you were to hit it like mm -hmm. going over a rocket, it just it just flexes yeah, okay. up and down. So you're not going to break it. Yeah. And then it use a super lightweight composite lid mm -hmm. and uh, very rigid for, for strength. Okay. And uh, and then on this side, there's size for a spare tire. So there's a spare tire in it right underneath me here. But, mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good. Okay, and how about the 550? So it has two compartments instead of four. Okay. So, okay. It, yep, that's one advantage to go into the bigger 5x10 unit is that extra two feet gives us floors. More floors yep, floors. okay, good, good. This is the guy who made my trailer learn from you guys, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, so. my, my personal trailer has over 100,000 miles on it. So Alaska, Florida, California, Maine, and pretty much everywhere in between. We just slide the stove in. I'm going to take the cooler, transfer it over. Fits into the 
alcove. 54 quart cooler, right? Yeah. It fits in there with the jacket on. Okay. You take the cooler stand. And collapse the leg. Get the fire extinguisher on the bottom side. And this table holds up. Pins into the cabinetry to keep it from moving around. Mm -hmm. Fold up the leg. Voila! Under a minute, right? <laughs> we advertise a five minute setup. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it, yeah. Okay, so now. Just pulled in, it's late at night, you're hungry. <laughs> I'm to make a. Trying to make the border. Set up. So yeah. open that up. Stand up the leg. This table up here, attach it. A little support in there. Okay, you have the hardware on the side to yeah. accept it. Now, if all you were going to do was make sandwiches, you wouldn't even have to pull the cooler. <laughs> yeah. And if you're going to cook, you got to move the cooler and pull the stove out. The stove's covered on three sides for wind protection. If it's really windy, you can flip up these. Oh, 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 oh. 360 degrees. Very nice. Yeah. You just have to flip the one down to yeah. stir or flip yeah. the pancakes. Yeah. Um, under the countertop is storage bins. Yeah. Great. Okay. You have an adequate supply of spam. Thank God. So. I know. <laughs> that and Vienna sausages. Yeah. Well, what, is a man, what else does a man them. need? Yeah. <laughs> so then we have these little storage bins that help organize the space in the kitchen. Mm hmm. Uh, we have two different depths of them. The other one actually has a deeper mm -hmm. one on the other side. So this is the kitchen if you were to have both of the, the storage compartments uh, with the, the, the bins. So there's a deeper one that's tall enough to hold a full-size can Yeah. or these tall spice bottles. And these are configurable. You have slots so you can yeah. widen this or narrow it right. as needed. Yeah. So you've got that one for the one side and then there's the shorter one on this side. Mm -hmm. Again, with the dividers that you can move. And pots and pans, where do you do with your pots and pans? They go down here? Uh, typically under the countertop. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Personally, this side, it, for my trailer, this side is pots and pans. Mm -hmm. This side is food, mm -hmm. dry, dry goods. Okay. You know, okay. Whatever yeah. doesn't go in the, the cooler. Mm -hmm. And then there's a very specific one. Oh, sorry. Craig, this is the cast iron frying pan slide. Uh, okay. Everybody <laughs> travel with a cast iron frying pan. Yeah. And we did find that you do have to segregate that so it doesn't crush everything. We, we added this after one of the first trips because we found out that a cast iron frying pan wins in a fight over the aluminum cookware that you spent a lot of money for. I have glass lids. Some people use this slot for wine bottles. Well, I can understand that. Right. Here you can see there we've got another engraved door mm -hmm. without the uh, picture frame. Yep. yep. So it's a solid door. Yeah. Um, what do people put in here? I mean, uh... Uh, that's where I put all of my cleaning supplies and Ziplocs and mm -hmm. aluminum foil and Trash stuff like bags. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But everybody has their their own use for it. Mm -hmm. Paper plates and paper bolts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and once you get area, this, you know, you right. just figure out what you, where things go. Yeah. Right. And this area up here is storage too, because once the lid's closed, it's all captivated. Right. Oh. I find this makes for a really good bread box. Okay. Because you can put your bread up there and it's not going to have a frying pan bouncing on it. I didn't get that. I didn't get that the, the lid would actually retain what's in here, which yeah. is a very well, nice touch. Sides. Yeah. They're, they're like big bread boxes. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Everything so is integrated. You see a camp in use, there's, uh, those upper cabinets are generally very, very full of stuff. And then you've got water on demand. Mm -hmm. Great. Here we've got our sprayer hose. Now, can I shower with that too? Oh, yeah. It's long enough to shower with. Well, it reaches out to yeah, the Yeah, yeah, that's all I need. Yeah, yeah. The drawer comes out here. 
forks or utensil tray it comes right mm -hmm. out. Okay. Okay, you've got room for forks, knives, and spoons, but you can also double up and throw salt and pepper shakers mm -hmm. in there. Or... Is this reconfigurable or this is, you know, this uh, is... Uh... This is not. Okay, okay. Um, but it's also a tray, so it's fully removable. Oh. And the bottom is smooth, so you can set it on a, a work surface. And yeah, you know, yeah, 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 port, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have a little uh, area there too for your, you know, for your whatever. Yeah. Right. Those are upper cabinets. Yeah. Very good. And you have uh, so this is the uh, stereo control, and you have speakers back yep. here. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. nice. I mean, it's really the Art Deco woodwork is just fabulous. Okay, and uh, okay on this side we've got a couple features. We've got a USB. Outlets, mm -hmm. uh, DC, uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter type outlets. Perfect. Uh, GFI outlet, and then this is the, the water system man uh, monitor. Mm -hmm. So it monitors the the fresh water level, the waste water level, and it, it has a rudimentary battery meter also. <laughs> this uh, this little button here. That is a circuit breaker for the incoming power. Okay. Okay. Um, in this cabinet, you can get this with a plain door or a customized door. This wow. one is got a Celtic knot design with a picture frame built in. And you open that up, and there's a, a small cubby there for mm -hmm. whatever you got to store. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. There's your uh, your controller, your solar controller. Yes. Yeah. So the that's wiring. the C tech okay. that you saw earlier. Yeah. And uh, you know the uh, the woodwork on top is just beautiful. There's a xenon. Uh, with a red and a, a white mm -hmm. and, dimmer controlled. and dimmer controlled. So okay. We, okay. We're just not willing to give up the dimmer function. And you have a little mirror up here? Yeah. So, yep, that's right, pull on that. In case, you're, in case you're looking like a beast out on the road, right? So, yeah. cool thing how the mirror works, we call it the high-low mirror. So that you have his side and you have her side. <laughs> uh, we have a really neat uh, backup light that also functions. And right you want to be careful here because I'm going to flip this on. So okay, going to get bright. Do it. Yeah. So there's a 600. Very nice. Open, uh, Much needed boondocking when you're parking. Oh my yeah, god. Much you're, needed. You're yeah. back here setting up camp in the dark. You can see what you're doing. Very nice. Yeah, very and nice. it is bright enough to back into a camping spot. Yeah. They're very important. You can see the whole camping spot. Oh yeah. yeah. And we, this one also has the stainless steel bumper. Mm -hmm. Uh, that'll protect you if you're backing into a campground and didn't see a tree or a fence post. Yeah. Sign for a lot of those. Here's our full hookup panel. Uh, we always joke that in, if the, you know, on a big RV, if they did this, it would be in a panel two foot by two foot, and we did it in a little space this big. <laughs> this is your water fill for your tank. You have a city water hookup. We find that that's really important when you're camping in places where the water is not to be trusted, right. so that you have a so you preserve the water in the tank for longer and use the city water for doing washing duties and things right. like that. We have an LP gas hookup where you can see this hose connected right now. Mm -hmm. For any gas appliance that you're going to bring with you, such as a barbecue grill or a second camp stove. So or a that's an output. Water, that's a, that's that's a, a propane that's a output. output. Anything that yeah. uses a one pound bottle, you can spin this on and right. place it a one pound Okay, bottle. great. And this is an outside faucet. Yep. So you could hook the gas and the, wa the water to, let's say, a portable water heater to have hot water for a shower. Or oh, wait a minute, I'm a little like confused. That. I okay. thought this is a water input, in. is it not? In. And that's a water out. Oh, 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 that's oh, your, oh, 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 okay. Basically your outside water spray. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. So. Yeah. so you just have, we just put a short hose on here. Yeah, they come yeah. short hose to demonstrate. Okay, so yeah. Available. Very good, yeah, if you want to. And we have little portable water heaters that go with it, like that little mm -hmm. red Coleman unit there. Okay. Are people buying these? Uh, you know, or... yep. Yep. Camping ukulele. Uh, <laughs> it's very nice. Gotta, yeah. have that, yeah. Gotta have that, yeah. So here all of this closes up behind a lockable door. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then also if you looked under here, there's a receiver hitch. So you can hook up your... Uh, bicycle. A bicycle rack. Yeah, yeah. And to either side of the receiver hitch, you're going to see our water tank. So. To mm -hmm. your left, that over there, the right is the gray tank, and to the left is the fresh tank. So yeah, I like your uh, outlets there for draining. Yeah, Very world nice. Simple, yeah. uh, world's simplest water system to maintain and, and use. Very nice. Yeah. And then if you look all the way to the edge of the trailer, we have the leveling jacks mm -hmm. that are bolted to the trailer. And our scissor jacks for a much larger trailer, but uh, we tried the, the little camping trailer jacks, and they just weren't. What we 
Yeah, you, you can actually level this trailer with those. Yeah. You can, well, you lift, yeah, you can jack it up and change, change the, the tire. tire. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is the electrical cabinet. We've uh -huh. got the battery is down underneath here. Can we see the fuse? Uh, so it's got up to 12 fuses. Uh -huh. There's 12 circuits. Yeah. What is the service, the AC service on this? 15. 15 amps, and that'll drive the air conditioner and, uh, and everything. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Here too, here's kind of a little design feature that a lot of people don't notice right away. Um, you're working on this stainless steel surface. If you spill something, first off, there's a little lip around the edge that helps contain any spills. Mm -hmm. But if it overflows, it comes in here, and we actually have a little gutter okay. along the sides right be below each of the seams in the top that helps collect uh, anything that. Most of the time, it's like toast crumbs and things. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. You know, we have a little uh, right. after after the third drink. You never but know what's going to happen. This, this back one, if you need to be able to get at that, we make the, the hinges so that they're removable. Wow. For cleaning. You see, now you just don't get detail like this on these uh, these uh, other companies. I'm you put the curtain rods on the top and the bottom so that they don't blow around when you go to close the door and, mm -hmm. and get stuck in the door. Very nice. These are uh, are these thermal curtains? They're they're lined. They're lined. They're lined yeah. For sun or light block. Yeah. yeah, very important. I find that uh, the curtains actually do help with cold weather. Uh, uh, I go out in sub-zero weather and it's uh, they've been very helpful. And we do sometimes see customers actually add a piece of material in there for, for the thermal benefit. Yeah. And uh, this little hole here? Uh, condensation vent. Trailer has to, it's so tightly sealed, it has to breathe if you leave the windows closed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it, it's, if you were to close the windows and tape those off, you'd have a hard time closing the doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I go for a flow-through ventilation. Uh, yeah, let, let me yeah, let me just stop this. Effect. Get the roof vent open, get the side open. You always want to do that. Cold colder weather is more important than this. Condensation is controllable in here? Mm -hmm. No wet wood, you know, when you're... Right, right. You know, okay. Yeah, you're, it's yeah. gonna, pretty much all of the condensation is going to form on the windows. On the glass, I agree 100%. Yeah. It might share the same thing. The same side thing. windows have drains and they, 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 they take care of themselves for condensation. Front windows, you, they collect on a... Uh, on a, on a uh, Polished yeah, no, I definitely get on my windows. Uh, that's the only place I'm getting it. Uh, you know, and I, I think that anybody else who owns an RV would be envious that we could say that, that our only condensation is collecting on glass. I mean, most, right. most, uh, most, most trailers are, you know, we're talking rain running down the walls, especially the, uh, the fiberglass, aluminum, and all those. Yeah, other, yeah you know, you're going to see some serious. Uh, it is built more like a wooden boat or a wooden aircraft from construction methods. Unibody construction, very rigid. We do all the woodworking in-house. It all starts with our CNC machining center here. You can see all you know, the parts that have been cut on in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. and it cuts through to the spoil board. And uses Does all the wood that comes, you know, that goes to goes into your trailer come from this machine? Yes, a majority of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very, very, very few would not be cut on this. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to cut a trailer out on this? You know, to uh, let's just say a 560, which is your bigger model. Body panels. Um, it's probably. Of runtime, probably about an hour and a half. For all the parts? All the parts. Well, that's not bad at all. That's yeah. pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a reason we have we spent the money on the equipment. It's, yeah. Uh, what does this thing go for? Oh, well, you know, you're, you're probably talking back in 2012 day hour. You know, a money of probably sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 All computer controlled. You guys program it and everything. And it's a lot more. Probably double better. that now. Yeah. So you know, and, and that's by the way the most important point right there. Uh, if we'd have bought this equipment, let's say back in 2002 or something, yeah, it would not have done what this does because the software has evolved so much. We're glad we waited until yeah. 2012 to order one, yeah, because it would have been very complex, complex, very difficult. yeah, CAD CAM like caught on fire, oh, you know. Yeah, I mean, G code and all that kind of thing. Yeah, now it's you take this, the the files right from our CAD software, the 3D CAD software we already are designing in, and then bring it into the software for the machine and just say, cut this edge with this bit, cut that edge with that bit, drill this hole. Yeah. And hit program, and hit program. And it's perfect every yeah, time. Much. Yeah. Perfect, no waste. Very little waste. Do you have the software that consolidates everything to maximize the it, it wood? It does that. Uh, we found we can do better. So yeah. we typically don't use the auto function because it's just not as good as... Uh, yeah, what we're talking about is getting the most pieces out of a piece of plywood. So the arrangement of the cutting yeah. to get the uh, absolute yeah. lo lo least amount of waste. So, we designed this building for our needs and we actually do a lot of tours of the building in itself 
because of the way it's built. It's a six panel building. Mm -hmm. It's very energy efficient in floor radiant heat system. If you look at the building, the building walls are actually eight inches of styrofoam. And you built your trailer technology into this. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's, it's hyper insulated. The, the roof has, what was the R value? Our, our 50 roof and our 33 walls. So yeah, we that. laid it out so to segregate the dusty areas from the non-dusty areas and all of that. About how many people work here? Uh, about a dozen right now. Once the trailer gets all cut out, we start to glue it together. The one that you see here is essentially pretty much ready to leave the wood shop and go to the spray finisher. Mm -hmm. now. Let me uh, just walk around here. Try 50 series. And these are wiring like channels? These are wiring, wiring channels. channels. Yeah, the other side has the bulk of the wiring, so actually a lot more on the other side. Yeah. Uh, this is a very well optioned camper. This has air conditioning and an LP furnace, even though it's the smaller model. Whose furnace do you use? Uh, it's a Suburban. Some camp-in modifications uh, mm -hmm. to solve some of the classic issues that our RV components have. So How many BTUs is that? They're 15,000, but we put a derating circuit in to bring them down. Yeah, 15,000 is a lot in a yeah, space actually, like this. Yeah, we, we built a custom circuit that modulates the flame uh -huh. so that it cycles the flame on and off without and allows the fan to continue without running. running it. Well, That's our electrical circuit tester. Uh, we do a complete test on all of the parts of the uh, trailer. And wiring harnesses wire and harness make sure everything functions as it should we connect up the seven pin connector if i turn on the running lights then the running lights come on and i can test them i can test the right turn left turn it's got a a, a voltage booster so it char it acts like it, the tow vehicle is charging the trailer we make sure it's that the battery's seeing a charge voltage how long to make a 550 start to finish well from all the way to completion signed off, uh, yep. you're looking at about 10 weeks. 10 weeks for one trailer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. in well, different that's phases. Couple, that's a couple of trailers, you know, that, that are going through. They're right. Yeah, they're going through in runs, yeah. yeah. Well, here in 2021, how about supply issues? Are you having any supply issues? They're, they're there, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all the dumb little stuff. It's the little stuff like uh, an outlet here, if you look. Um, all of the body joints are reinforced. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a gusset where every connection is to yeah. the body that makes for a very rigid body. Yeah, no flex. It's all right, it's yeah. waterproof glues. Everything is glued. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no joint that is just stapled or screwed. It, they are all glued. Mm -hmm. um, that ma and it makes for a very rigid, very robust trailer. Yeah, these um, things can end up on one wheel, you know, when you're out in the boondock. And, tip and, over and, and, all we <laughs> and roll. Have, and all we have to do is replace the corner trim on the body. <laughs> And, and you can see here too, with this camper sitting here like this, you know, with its, you know, it's very rigid body, it real, does not rely on the steel frame for strength. <laughs> nah, the joints never come apart. <laughs> Has it tapered off now? Now that the uh, the pandemic is kind of, uh, we understand it a little better, well, I guess I would, I would say. say uh, August of 2020 is like somebody turned a giant switch on, and it hasn't slowed down. This is a spray finish area. Uh -huh. This is the sanding room where everything gets all hand sanded out. Uh, this is actually between coats. This has already had a sealer on it. It's had its truck bed liner undercoating applied. Mm -hmm. It's on its rotisserie and, and being sanded right now so that it can go into the spray booth for its top coat. Can, can we look under it? Let me look under it here. I just want to, yeah. All right, you got it? <laughs> okay. It, we use a, a two part marine year thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we specially ordered, bring it in from Italy because we need to be formaldehyde free. We're, we're, we're essentially a 100% formaldehyde free product. I don't think there's anybody in the... Uh, no, no, wood is laced. Well, oh, like cancer oh, yeah. galore, right? I mean, it's... Uh, I can't imagine working in that environment. Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered any other materials such as fiberglass well, or foam? Uh, or? Funny you should say that. Uh, I don't know if Craig mentioned to you the internet, but the other brand of campers that we manufacture. This trailer sitting right here is 540 pounds. <laughs> wow, 540. Yeah. You can pull it with a Prius. Yeah, it's like... Oh, oh God. That's the tires on it. <laughs> Uh, they started about six thousand dollars. We'll touch on those later. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, does, as an owner, does an owner have to do anything to maintain the underbody? Uh, you know, as time goes on, you know, check for uh, for any, you know, anything. No, no. There's nothing underneath that has to be done. Maintenance free. It is essentially a, mm -hmm. a, a maintenance free camper, other than packing the wheel bearings every twenty five thousand right. miles and keeping the battery maintained. That's it. Yeah, they've been varnishing some of the, the paneling for the inside. Yep. Wow, and this is what, rosewood? Or what is so that? So you see there, ribbon straight mahogany and uh, bamboo. Those are our paneling upgrade kits. That is that real mahogany wood? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And so it's a real veneer with the same two-part marine urethane finish on mm -hmm. it. So it's a very popular option, as you can tell by the number of panels you see in here. Yeah. Uh, most people do opt for it just because it's a much more durable product than a standard paneling. Mm -hmm. And yeah, bamboo, that's pretty durable stuff too. And yeah. very hard, yes. Very hard, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Okay, so everything gets painted in here? Yeah. All right. Yeah, specially uh, built spray booth uh, mm -hmm. just for us. Yeah. Great. Get mounted on a steel frame. Uh, the frames are made out of house, and we're actually we're moving along so fast in production, we're, we're waiting on frames. We'll actually have frames here in about two days. Are your frames custom designed? They are frames, yes. yes. They're made for us. Uh, use a very high-end direct-to-metal finish on it and everything. To what are, are they steel? They are steel. Mm -hmm. No yeah. aluminum? Uh, no. We start running the wire harness in, so some of it is being done on that one there because it's waiting for its frame. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you can see the wiring's run through the channels that were cut in the body. Yes. And then we just tape them in place, and then once the skin is put over here, that captivates it so they can't come out mm -hmm. at all. Um, and then they just start going together. Here. Yeah, you can see a lot of the cabinet doors. Got some of the cabinetry is already installed. They're all green matched. They're they're cut right from the the, the cabinet. And, and, and very nice. Marked with a number, and then match right. back up to it later. One of the features you notice that the the green pattern. Yeah, can, oh, it's out of one piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so if we lose the door, we lose the whole cabin. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That is very impressive. Very nice. That's a trick to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of planning went into this. A lot of yeah, years, right? That was one of those ones that uh, once we got the CNC machine working, it did <laughs> it took a while to figure out how to do that. <laughs> well, the finish is just spectacular. I mean, it looks like glass. Yeah. 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 We are... Uh, We've, worked, we've excelled on the wood finish. <laughs> That's an understatement. Yeah. Skins get put on, they're pre-floated on. Mm -hmm. uh, they get held in place by all of the extrusions and components, mm -hmm. like fenders and such. Yeah, yeah, this is air conditioning? Yes. Air conditioning, yeah. yeah, yeah. air conditioning out there. Now, air conditioning, from what I, if I remember correctly, maybe it's changed, but air conditioning is you decide on air conditioning when you're going to get the trailer. Correct. And, uh, and you know, that's, you know, that's, you either get air conditioning or you don't get air conditioning. Right. So it's this not whole, a... This whole part of the body is completely different on an air conditioned one from a non-air conditioned one. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why we generally recommend you always get the air conditioner because <laughs> you can't have it later. Yeah. I don't believe I see any out here without air conditioning. So, yeah. And if, um, if that air conditioner... Usually there's one or two. If that unit goes, you can pull it out and pop in another one. Yeah, it's just a 5,000 BTU unit. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. You want replaceable parts. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Before the cabinetry gets put in, we install mm -hmm. the electrical system. Okay. So what do we have here? Okay. You have everything is ground fault when it comes into the trailer, right? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. And then this is uh, a. So that is a DC charge controller for the rooftop solar system. The charges from it controls the charge from the tow vehicle and for the external. AC uh, solar connector too. Oh, oh okay. So X solar that's connector. Separate okay. Separate from the, the onboard charger that ch maintains the battery when it's plugged in. So how many uh, uh, watts can this stand? Is C Tech? So it's a 20 amp. So it's going to be about a little over 200 watts. Okay, great, great. Okay, yeah. 200 watts. And how much solar can you get on the roof? We have a 126 watt rooftop solar system, which we found is actually way exceeding our expectations. How big is the battery? Uh, typically a 78 amp hour. 78 amp hour. Well, I would be a different customer. I would need a lot more than that. The wow. solar is sufficient fact, to run they're, all they're, of that and with extra to top off the... Do battery. they live like in New Mexico or Arizona? No, no, no they're, not. they're considering buying a, uh, a Jackery or, a, you know, one of these solar generator boxes and I think they're a big boon to the whole camp. Well, how about lithium batteries? Are you considering lithium batteries? We are in the works on that and mm -hmm. we will be coming up soon our battery manufacturer we're waiting for them to come up with the proper size battery with heated cells a lot of people don't realize that they think they can grab any lithium battery off the internet and stick it in but you can't do it in freezing temperature i'm a winter camper and uh that's a, that's a no-go so i'm happy right. with lead acid blanket. you want to do heated cells so where is the battery on these things great right below the, this panel it would be oh. in here once this is all completed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Come over here and you start skinning them. Uh, I just can't get over the woodwork. So this one is, has a furnace that you see the ductwork running through the, yeah, the foil the curved parts there. Over there? Yeah. Okay. So where would the heater be? 
uh, it's going to be right here. Okay. So actually utilize some of the storage area in the front. Okay, so that, that and you duck that in, and the, where are the uh, the registers where the air comes out of? There would be, at the if end you of see that black area at yes. the end of the duct, then yeah. that's where the vent would be, and then there'll be one on the, this side too. Okay, great. We're actually at the exact same point of construction from here on up, mm -hmm. because we were waiting on some parts on the, <laughs> these part shortages we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, uh, at the previous row, and while we were doing it, it's like, well, let's just get them all up to that same point. So, <laughs> Waiting for the UPS guy. Yeah, just yeah. like What's your biggest selling trailer? Uh, the bigger 560 yeah. in the top package yellow trailer. Yeah. Yeah. It's about 70% of our production. So yeah. It's all stainless steel kitchen. Connected, but it looks like it is. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. 15,000 BTU per burner. Yeah, well protected from the wind. And that's that's a very key. A lot of people, oh, I'd like to bring it out. No. No. No, you don't. No, 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 no. You'll find that out pretty quick. <laughs> the fenders obviously are our own design. Even the they're stainless steel, welding ground, 14 gauge. Um, those fenders will wow. be around in yeah. another 200 years. <laughs> what size tires are you using? 14 inch wheels. 14 inch wheels. So okay. there are 14 inch wheels on the Campton product across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, different size tires depending on which. Uh, off-road option and things like that you get. So a fully uh, tricked out 550, what does that weigh? Uh, you're gonna be maybe 1250. That's dry weight? Yeah, dry weight. 1250, and how about the tongue weight? Uh, so 125 to 135 pounds. And how about in a 560? Uh, so those will be about 150 pounds more. Uh, so it's like 1300? So you can be 13, up, fully load up, you can be 1400, 1450. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one that right behind you will probably be heavier than that when it's done because it's got a rooftop tent and a big awning going on the roof rack and all that because he's got kids. Tongue weight on that trailer? So that one will be a little, you know, so that's probably quick pushing 1600 pounds empty and that'll be the 560 is interesting. The tongue weight starts heavy at about 190 pounds, and then as you load it, it actually goes down. Oh, the counterbalance of the because, water and stuff? Because the most of the weight in a teardrop camper is in the galley. Yeah. It has more of an effect on reducing tongue weight. Sure, a cantilever yeah. effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Within yeah. a classic teardrop. Yeah, and you've got a lot of rear end on these trailers, yeah, compared to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the wheels are forward, yeah. When you go from an eight to a 10 foot, you've got to move the wheels forward. Yep. But the kitchen's still in the same spot, so you have to uh, uh, factor that in. Yeah, no, you ha you're, you're well out. The rear end is, uh, you, got a, you got a big rear end. So the math gets yeah. really, you know, got really interesting on the design of that. What, what axles are you using? We use Flexoride axles. Flexoride. Flexoride, so you, that uses a forged trailing arm spindle arrangement uh, with splined uh, torsion stubs so that you can adjust the ride height so it actually, you can move it up and down to different heights. Oh. So if I was going out fully loaded, would I change anything or uh, as opposed to going empty? Like, no, no. no. so it's, you, you set it but, and forget right. it. We preset it yeah. for the trailer. You yeah. know, that, what, what we do, we take advantage of the, the height adjustment to make the difference between the street model, which is a little lower, and the SUV model, which is raised up. Oh, well, good, what's, what's the uh, how, how clearance on the street model? Uh, ground clearance. Uh, well, well, it leaves here. Inches. Yeah. Yeah. About 10 inches? Yeah. Okay. And the, uh, the off-road model? So it would be another three, so 13 inches. 13, that's very good. Yeah, I mean, my, uh, my Subaru has eight and well, that's, three quarters. See, that's know? a point that I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Because everybody's like, oh, I'd like to have more than that. Well, what's your car? Exactly, they, they, yeah. They tell me, it's like, well, that's got seven inches. Yeah. Or that's got eight inches, or, you know what I mean? Exactly, so yeah. Most tow vehicles, off-road or not, even like, so even like, you take like a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. They're seven and a half inches. You got more ground clearance. Yeah, than Toyota Super Tacoma, Wrangler. you know, same thing. It's, yeah, yeah same the most popular rigs, yeah. they don't have, uh, yeah. yeah. But but it does help you when you go through a gully or a ditch, you know, right. you have a cantilever, the uh, hinged effect, you know, articulated. Yeah. Well, you want to, so the, the, right, the, 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 the spot that's going to get you on a trailer is the back corner. Mm -hmm. the, the exit angle and the hitch ball. That's right, yeah. And those are what's gonna drag. Yeah. The higher yeah. you get those, the, the less you're gonna drag. Lighting is all LED? External on the ultra package is all LED. Guys, I asked about roof racks. Uh, for years, we never even put roof racks on the showroom demonstrator. Yeah, otherwise you gotta move camp just to you go kayaking. You gotta camp and take the camper with you. Yeah. you Notice in the last couple of years is the roof rack what it goes on the roof racks has really evolved to the roof rack need. Uh, awnings have been huge for us. We have a, uh, a, a, a lot of single women for customers. Mm -hmm. And awnings that they can set up by themselves 
has been really big. And that's kind of where we really first started seeing the, the need. Uh, we carry two brands. We carry just a real basic Yakima Slim Shady uh, pullout that's uh, six and a half feet by six and a half feet. And then we also uh, carry the Bum Duan, which is absolutely amazing. It's a 360 degree one and it goes all the way around the trailer. And uh, beams, uh, uh, like it has support beams? Yeah, no poles. No poles, okay, so yeah. self supporting, yeah. It's okay. self supporting, it actually opens up. Yeah. Also, and gives you like a peak roof. How much does that? Kitchen and everything. What does that cost? Uh, an option like that? Just... Well, that's a fairly expensive option. So you're in that seventeen hundred dollar range to pay yeah. for an awning like that. Yeah. I was surprised at how many of those we sell. Yeah. Actually, so that, that awning will extend eight feet to the side, mm -hmm. eight feet to the front, eight feet to the rear, and eight feet back. And it will extend three feet past. But the it wraps side around. Of the yeah. 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 And, and you, you can still put an awning on the other side then. To close it off. So you'd ask about awnings. Now we're not an ARV dealer at the moment, but the most common awning that we actually install are actually ARVs. Uh, and what's neat about that is there's a attachable room, mm -hmm. so they can have a eight foot by six and a half foot screen room, privacy room with mm -hmm. a full floor and everything that just simply attaches to this real easy setup awning. So we've got customers who'll have a bundle on on one side, an ARV on the other for their changing room, and they end up with a whole well, basically, <laughs> have a whole neighborhood. Right? Yeah, I mean that's the lap of luxury right there. <laughs> yeah, slightest breeze, uh, horizontal will uh, will bring rain in, and uh, you know you sign on to that when you're a teardrop yeah. trailer camper. But very valuable because uh, rain, you know, when it falls vertically, no problem. But just a little bit of breeze would bring water down here. Same with my yeah. trailer. Same with all of them. Just the wind when you're trying to cook them. Uh, people contact me all the time. And say, where'd you get those things? You know, I wish I could get them from my trailer. So it's a really nice uh, option to have. I wouldn't get a trailer mm -hmm. without it. The, the marker lights that you see on the camp in have had an interesting history. They are uh, based on a vintage light from the 50s that is was very common. When we started manufacturing these, we were still buying the components to make our lights. And all of a sudden we couldn't get them because the tool that molded the lens broke. So we went to our light manufacturer and said, can you make these lights? Sure. So as long as you convert them to LED. <laughs> well, yeah, we want an LED. So we manufactured our own line of, we actually have a kind of a little side business selling marker light parts to people with vintage trailers because we own the tooling basically to make those. The one that you're looking at there is actually pretty cool. This one uses the components but not the base because it has this unique casting to uh, tie the, the different parts of the roof of a 560 together in a stylish manner. So I have the rooftop solar system which has been just absolutely uh, amazing to us. We've it's exceeded our expectations. Uh, it charges when you drive, it charges when you stop driving. <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Uh, average customer gets about two, two and a half years out of a fill in the tank. Mm -hmm. So it's fantastic uh, whether they got the furnace or no furnace. Mm -hmm. Tongue box is uh, what we call a bifurcated uh, tongue storage compartment. The upper half is cabinets in the front of the cabin, and the lower half is outside storage compartments for your dirty, wet, uh, messy campsite setup stuff. You know, mm -hmm. top blocks, local mats, yeah, tent extension poles. cords, yeah, yeah. yeah. hammer for guys in tent stays. So let me just check that from the inside. Huh? Okay, on a 560, in order to access the front storage box compartments, um, you would just tip forward the, the uh, couch frame, mm -hmm. and then you've got your storage boxes here. Mm -hmm. um, reach the one on this side if you look up in there it has a an AC DC and USB outlets on no, on the right hand side there oh yeah 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 okay very nice so a lot of people use that for charging they can run their cell phone charger up onto the shelf mm -hmm. um, you can put CPAP machines in there the notches in the doors allow the CPAP hoses to come out um, so that you can access them without having to leave the doors open. Is this? Uh, what's the average age of a camping buyer? About two years from retirement. Okay. Uh, they're, they're getting ready to retire. They're, you know, they're planning what they're going to do. Uh, now they're not all at that age, but they, they you know, from that point. Yeah. We, we get a lot of early empty nesters. Yes. You know, or or their kids are old enough that they can fend for themselves for the weekend. We had a. a 
couple that bought a trailer uh, a couple years before they were ready to retire, figuring that they'd have a year or two to practice uh, before they did some serious camping. And they found the first year that they had the trailer, they, they camped for 16 weekends while they were still employed. That's pretty much the whole summer. Yeah. <laughs> the younger demographic has started to add on, which we, we think is great. Uh, because of things like the rooftop tents and the bunk beds. And the this adventure set that likes to do mountain biking, kayaking, and all that, and they just want to go. They're not interested in, you know, in settling so down. We have those customers in that age demographic, but those, are usually, those customers are usually in their 40s, maybe early 50s, and they don't have kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, the, it's the, the younger ones are going to be the ones who got the kids, and you just can't figure out how to do it until they see this. Mm. Uh, and, and the rooftop tents have been really popular. Have you place. slept in a rooftop tent? Yes. They're very well ventilated. Uh, you know, the ease of setup is actually really amazing. That's a Yakima. It's okay. A, so it's a really nice quality. A lot of customers have a big aversion to campgrounds that have electricity. Hmm. They just don't want to be in the campground. It, it may not be that they're boondocking, but they're going to be more primitive camping. Dry camping, I Dry guess you'd camping. call it. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're going to be in the overflow field at, at the campground. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is pull in between two huge motor homes are running their air conditioning and generators. And I, I've even just found roads going back into the woods, pulled in there and set up for them. Yeah, yeah. About care and ownership, maintenance. Well, let me, co let me cover that a little bit because, you know, it's not kind of a big point that we do. When you buy something like this, you get a new customer orientation that's about six hours long. And a lifetime of care and maintenance is a lot of what we are covering in that, in that time, time period. And of course, the very first question everybody has is how do I keep this trailer looking this good the rest of its life? And there's two ways to kind of basically do that. One is to not touch it all that much because fingerprints will be the thing that drive you crazy. Uh, and always put it away clean. Uh, driving in the rain, the, uh, the material off the road splashing on there, left on there, will will discolor the metal or stain it or pit it or everything like that. So when we see a customer who's got concerns about some stains or some uh, pitting on the metal, or something. it's always because they, they put it away dirty and let it sit for a while. Yeah, this is acids it's from the... It's amazing uh, how if you yeah. just wash them, they stay looking good for years and years and years. And a little oxidation is, uh, is par for the course. So yeah. a little oxidation is your best friend, because uh, it will actually uh, stop, uh, prevent fingerprints, mm -hmm. and it, it works like an armor coat mm -hmm. that then keeps the, the metal safe and sound and not not pitted and things like that. Can we look at an old skin? Uh, do you have one here? I've got a few. Let's just take a you know, peek at one before I go. You know. One right over there. Well, there's that too. Yeah. Don't have to walk very far, you're going to see this. <laughs> so okay. That's, that's serial number two. So this okay. is, a, a, what year is this from? That was from a um, 2002. 2001. Well, mm -hmm. two, yeah, late 2001. 2001, and 2001. this is uh, what it's somebody could expect. It's kind of dusty, so it's mm -hmm. kind of yeah, 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 how yeah. shiny it is. But uh, this is oxidized a little bit? Yep. Because you really can't even see it. Yeah, you can't it's, see it. The oxidation everybody's worried about this, really is that, and that's right. not a problem. Yeah. It, it's not quite as bright as the original metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if we were to set that old hatch next to one of you know, that new trailer, you would see a different coloration slate, mm -hmm. but that's about it. Right. Okay, so <laughs> this hatch was actually on a on my personal trailer, so about 10 years uh, when I was done. The camping. snood, what is this uh, snood? So we call that the Alcan cover. Mm -hmm. A lot of customers buy these specifically for Alaska trips, and the Alaska Highway is known to be death in front of a trailer because of the shale rocks. So we needed to come up with a protectant that actually will bounce the rocks off. So it's a padded bra, if you will. Mm -hmm. The rocks hit it and they, they bounce off. Very popular option, most customers do get that because if you're using an SUV or a truck as a tow vehicle, you're gonna probably throw a lot of rocks at the front of the camper, so it even just... Yeah, these jacked up trucks with the big tires and everything. Yeah, even a Subaru Outback or something like that, which, mm -hmm. you know, is the most common tow vehicle we see here by far. Yeah, <laughs> they're good cars. Yeah, so we appreciate that. Oh, it's nice. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely padded. I mean, you can press into this quite a bit. Yeah, and this is replaceable, obviously. Yeah, it just slides on and off. Yeah, so, so. Was that like a channel? Yeah, yeah, it's a channel here. It just slides in and off. Oh, okay, great. You know, if you're going to go to Alaska, um, you can buy one of these, have it on your trailers to keep it from getting dented. Or if you go without the bra, you can, when you get back, you can buy the bra to cover the dents. <laughs> <laughs> good, good advice. Entrance tent, okay. So that is, we custom designed for <laughs> teardrops. Uh -huh. 
Um, it's actually designed to work with many home builds and uh, other brands. Uh, it's adjustable. Not, not a vestibule. <laughs> okay. Not a vestibule. No. It is. He tried. He really did. Yeah. Yeah. He really did yeah. We actually mailed him one, and he tried fitting it, and it yeah tried wouldn't it. go. Okay. Good. Um, good. But it gives you a place for a porta potty. It gives you a place to change, a place to to stand up and get dressed. Mm -hmm. um, it's got the privacy curtains, mm -hmm. uh, bug screens. Um, there's other things inside. There's hooks to hang lanterns, yeah. uh, hooks for coat hooks. My trouble is fitting all this stuff in the car. Even though it's collapsible in my car, you can't fit a toothpick in there when I'm going. Okay. <laughs> I forget everything, you know. <laughs> yeah, thankfully it wasn't a small bag that was on the bed. They, you know, I mentioned a, a lot of single women buy these custom, buy these campers from us. And the side tent's super important for them for the port bags. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it's amazing what I've learned about portable toilets from women over the years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every year, uh, the last full weekend in September, we hold the camp in, camp out. Past year, we had about 170. Thinking about a camp in, this is the place to go and meet all the owners. Absolutely. How they set them up, how do, how do they pack their kitchen, how do they make their beds, all of that. It, it's, it's really worth doing. It. Our event is open to everybody. Mm -hmm. it, you don't have to be a camp in owner no, to, to no. be there. We've got people in motorhomes, we've got people sleeping in their van, uh, we've got tenters. Uh, everything in between. Yeah, uh, we, we we even let, yeah, we even let other brands in. <laughs> there's usually a couple of them vestibules there. Have you ever heard of those? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'll be the pariah. But, you know, I, I, I find everybody I've met who's into Teardrop, you know, it's a subculture, right? Oh, We're yeah. our home bohemian subculture, which is a little outside the norm, and everybody is just great. And here is the 550. Wooden, wooden heat louvers. towards the uh, the front of the trailer.